Other guys, lots to get through on this video, so I'm not going to waste much time. We're going to be covering stories such as, is it the end of the iMac? Twitter's gone bonkers. And I've even got some free wallpaper for you. Hey, it's me, David, and it's great to be back with you. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would love it if you could. The buttons are just down there. We've got a lot to get through, so I won't uh, delay too long. Unless you've been living in a cave, of course, you'll know that it was the first Apple event of the year on Tuesday of the week just gone. Peak performance came and went, and it was quite a goodie. I'll just give you a very quick recap, just so you know what went on. Apple TV is going to get live baseball on a Friday night. We're not sure if that's part of the standard subscription pack or not. Then we were given the two products that we knew about, the iPhone SE Gen 3. Blah, got a new chip. Move on. Uh, the iPad Air has now got the M1 chip inside of it, so it's super powerful, so you can send an email even quicker. I think that's about what you can do with it. And there's new purple color on it as well iPhone's got a couple of colors. Well, one color washed down into two. If you're poor and you've only got the iPhone 13 mini or iPhone 13, you get green. And if you're posh and pretentious and you've got the Pro or Pro Max 13, then you get Alpine green. So two new colors on the phone. Uh, and then, of course, the big one that we're all waiting for, the announcement of the Mac Studio and the Studio Display. The Studio Display, I think, is an absolute winner, really keenly priced because it's not just a monitor. You've got a six speaker sound system in there and you've got the ultra wide 12 megapixel camera, which means we've got center stage for the first time on a Mac and three microphones also for your conference calls online, which are meant to be running some sort of noise compression. So that I think is wonderfully priced at $15.99. Don't get me wrong, not cheap, but attractively priced for a 5K 27 inch monitor, albeit not mini LED. Uh, as for the Mac Studio, it's too much for me, too much power. I don't know what to do with it. I'm, <laughs> I'm at a loss as to where they're gonna go next. And when we get to the Mac Pro later in the year, how much more power could we really need? So that was a quick recap of what went on at peak performance. Let's get into what uh, Apple are doing in regards to Russia now. So as the war escalates in Ukraine, Apple have made their position very clear. This week, they have shut down their online store and they're stopping all exports to Russia as well. Apple Pay is now very restricted and there's no live updates on traffic and live features on Apple Maps in Ukraine just to help protect the people that are still living there. And really the only other thing that Apple could do and it's being rumored they may do is completely shut down some of the cloud services such as iCloud and iMessage. But Apple have made their position very clear this week. So I've got COVID or COVID related news for you now, but it's positive with cases falling in the States and indeed globally of COVID-19, Apple have announced that they are changing what they are expecting of their employees. Come the 11th of April, one day a week will be mandatory for employees to go back to Apple Park. Then three weeks after that, it's gonna be two days a week. And in a staggered approach by the 23rd of May, everybody is expected to be working three days a week in the office at Apple Park. But uh, they're not alone on that. I think a lot of the large corporations such as Google are also making such demands of their workforce. What do you think? And where? Do, what's it like where you work? Are you being told to go back to the office more? Let me know in the comments below. I'd like to know if Apple are alone on this or if you're facing changes in your working conditions too. I kind of got used to lockdown. Is it wrong to say I enjoyed it? Anyway, it is what it is. If you work for Apple, three days a week is coming soon, baby. So in COVID, Related news, let's talk about face coverings. Remember those? <laughs> it seems a long time ago all of a sudden, doesn't it? As long as people are vaccinated, the workers are vaccinated, they can work in areas that have got no restrictive mandates without any masks at all. Both vaccinated and unvaccinated staff will be tested twice weekly to maintain that there's a clean record of health there. And there's also been an easing of mandate for shoppers to wear face masks in store. And the mandate that uh, the guys and girls that work in the Apple stores have to wear masks has also been eased. And uh, I mentioned last week also that the uh, today at Apple, the classes and lessons they've started, certainly in major cities around the States, and I think globally they're coming back as well. So I think COVID is kind of like a bye-bye, we're done with you, it's through, it's over. Very few restrictions now in stores about face coverings. And as I said, guys and girls are gonna be expected to go back to Apple Park as well. So I'm sure you follow Apple on YouTube, but have you been watching their Apple at Work campaign? It's been running for a few years now, different uh, themes each year. This year, our intrepid heroes decide it's time to start their own company. It's really funny, it's a great video. I've left the link for it in the show notes for this video. 
go click on it, take a look. Well, clearly watch this video first, but, but then go take a look at it and watch it. By the way, talking to videos, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and make sure to turn on the notifications so you never miss another one of my videos. So have you been getting knocked off with Twitter recently? I love it. I spend too much time there, but they've changed things. I thought it was me for starters, but it's not. They've changed the feed so that you no longer get a chronological timeline anymore. You get suggested tweets at the top. You don't get latest tweets at the top and it drives me mad. You have to do it manually all the time. And I say, I honestly thought it was me to start that Twitter have admitted to changing it. And they're saying they might change back in the future. I don't understand why change it. It was great as it was. We all love Twitter as it was. We loved the latest tweets at the top. Surely I'm not alone in that. It was the obvious thing, wasn't it? And now they've gone and I messed the whole thing up. Anyway, let's pray. Let's pray that this last uh, iteration of it moves away quickly and we get back to how I used to love Twitter. Don't go anywhere because in a little while I'll be telling you where you can find some Mac wallpapers for yourself, Mac and iPhone wallpapers. I've got them and I'll be giving them away free in this video. But let's carry on now with rumors about the 27 inch iMac. Did you know that quietly this week as they were announcing Mac Studio, they withdrew the 27 inch iMac, you can no longer buy it. Rest in peace. You can see one behind me there, they're great machines, but it looks like quite possibly that could be the last iMac, last big iMac we ever see. It could be that now we just get the 24 inch consumer level iMac with either the M1 or soon to be M2 chip in it. And then the, the tier will be filled with the high end Mac mini, which soon will be getting some kind of M1 in it. And of course, Mac Studio as well. And Mac Studio can take you all the way up to Mac Pro, so it almost seems like there's no point in having an iMac in there anymore. It's a real shame, they were great machines. Have you had one? I've had a couple. I love these 27 inch displays, and that's partly why I wanna get the 27 inch studio monitor actually, because I've got so used to working with these that uh, it's just anything after that just pales in comparison, doesn't it? But yeah, it looks like we're saying goodbye to the iMac, rest in peace. The M2 chip is coming, we know it's coming. We're not sure if it's gonna be this year, quite possibly later in the year, but it is definitely coming. This week, 9 to 5 Mac reported that tests are already underway with it, and they expect that it's first gonna be seen in the 13-inch MacBook Pro, the budget 13-inch MacBook Pro, and also in the MacBook Air, which we're expecting to see some new colors on and a squared off design when that comes out. Apple have got a super busy year ahead of them with releases, so whether they get around to these M2 chips this year or not, we don't know, but they are definitely coming and just wait to see what they can do. How much more power do we need? So if you're over in the States at the moment, an iPad user and looking for a new Magic Keyboard, Amazon is where you need to go. The deal of the century is there right now for the 12.9 inch version of the Magic Keyboard. You can get it uh, with a discount of $56, making it the cheapest I've ever seen it at $293. Go quickly and have a look at it. As for me, I'm just an iPad mini user. I'm just a little boy at heart. So in the same week that they took away the iMac from us and gave us, they gave unto us the Mac Studio. Can you believe that they made some changes to the Mac Pro? Who would be looking to buy a Mac Pro right now? I have no idea. They've given it more storage and they've changed the graphics card as well. They've taken up to 512 gigs of storage and uh, it's now got a Radeon Pro W5500X graphics card inside of it. And it's gonna set you back $6,000. It suddenly seems like a dinosaur, doesn't it? Why are they making these changes now? Let me know if you understand, because I sure as hell don't. Staying on the studio display, well, kind of, Ross Young, as you know, he's the analyst that gets everything right about screens. He has told us to expect a mini LED version of the studio display. As you know, the one that was released this week wasn't a mini LED. And Ross is suggesting that we might see it as early as WWDC in June. And by the way, if you have pre-ordered your Studio Mac and wonder what it's gonna look like in its box when it turns up, I've got a picture for you right here, a little leak for you. Only time for a couple more stories this week, and the first of those is about Instagram. If you're an Instagram user on iPad, you will have noticed that there is no dedicated app. All you get at the moment is kind of like a blown up app from the iPhone, and it looks awful. It really does look shocking. Well, Adam Mazzeri, who is the head of Instagram, have said they're in no rush to develop it. He was having a Twitter conversation with Marques, and in that uh, conversation, he said, we haven't got enough people to develop the app. And although we were after it quite regularly, not enough people are asking for it. Can you, this company is owned by Facebook and you're telling me they couldn't get a few more employees and be dedicated to making an app for Instagram for iPad. I'm, I don't know what's going on. It would seem that when they say there's not enough users asking for it, how many people 
really would love that. And if you do want that Instagram app, make sure you let them know. I don't use Instagram an awful lot. The odd time I have looked at it on iPad, it is shocking. And surely, surely now in 2022, it should have its own app. But, you know, maybe maybe they haven't got the employees and maybe they haven't got the spending power that we thought. You know, by Facebook, surely they can get this thing done, can't they? And after this week's peak performance, it looks like we're going to be getting some new colours for the silicon MagSafe cases. There's going to be four new colours I've heard that are coming out in yellow, dark green, purple and orange. And they should be available hopefully sometime in spring. We generally get some new colours in spring. Not only that, those colours are going to be replicated onto Apple Watch. And I've heard also that the MagSafe wallets might be getting some new colours too. So spring looks like it's going to be colourful. So just one more story for you this week, and it is two companies that we thought didn't love one another at all, but they found the love. I'm talking about Peloton and Apple. As we know, there's been some spats over recent times. Well, recently, in the last week, in fact, Peloton have just started support for Apple Watch heart rate integration into their bike and tread products. See, they do love one another, really. Just tears at bedtime. And not only that, Peloton have also started making their own Apple Watch bands, and there's a lovely big Peloton logo on them. So everything is fine between Peloton and Apple. I can rest easy at night. That's all I've got time for on this week's video for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, if you enjoyed it, give it a like and also turn on all notifications so you never miss another one of my videos. But in the meantime, thank you so much for joining me, and I shall catch you on the next one.